Wendy Gohor, former dean who just left us last month. My very distinguished guests from abroad, welcome to Pakistan, welcome to Lahore, and welcome to UNT. My very learned guests from Pakistan, but outside UNT, from different cities and different institutions. Thank you very much for honoring us. Thank you very much for participating in this conference. And thank you very much for taking the initiative to enrich the dialogue and discussions here at the uh, International Conference on Innovative Computing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> the present epoch in which we are living and working is characterized by the world of computing. I try to think that what is it that computing does for us in our, the way we live, the way we work, the way we think, the way we act, and the way we project and plan. So I could not see any domain that could possibly be left out of the reach and influence of computing. So computing is all pervasive. It is everywhere. It is embedded and it is outside, it is inside, and it characterizes everything today that we do. And I felt that it determines what is it that we should be doing. It determines our choices for us. It discovers what it is that is possible. It discovers what is it that has not been achieved and accomplished and that can yet possibly happen. So this is what computing does. And then <coughs> it helps us and equips us to decide, to make intelligent choices. It arms us with tremendous power backing up our own reflection and thinking, our own judgment, and helps us to decide what, is, what should be the way forward, what should be the preferred way, and what is right, what is better, what is truth. So I think computing helps us in making better decisions. It increases the quality of our decisions. <clears throat> and then computing also delivers. It is integrally responsible for the delivery of outcomes and output that we desire, the products and services that we target. So computing delivers. It helps us. It comes up with what we aim at and it facilitates our, our production of output. It facilitates generation of services. And then you go on and you will find that computing also has taken a role to develop our civilization our culture, it has taken upon itself the responsibility and it is increasingly factoring in the thresholds of civilizations which is dependent upon enlightenment, which is dependent upon reasoning, which is dependent upon rationality, which is dependent upon uh, what we create, 
So computing is also responsible for transition of our age from one age to the next age. From one threshold to the next threshold. From one stage to the other stage. And it is good for the nations, especially, who are beset by the problems of poverty, illiter uh, illiteracy, unemployment, who have resources, but they are unaware of the resources sitting within their borders, who have got talent, but they don't know how to put that talent into a fruitful, meaningful, purposeful uh, jobs. So computing is also integral to development. It develops. And then you go on to find that it is also now part of the design process. You have imagination, you have fantasy, but then you need a factory, a design factory, to put that imagination into a realizable thing. And computing helps us generate the range of products that are possible without actually making the models before you make the models. Before you do pilots, there is this design factory that computing enables you to work with to actually develop and design things. So our capability to design, creative design, our capability to critically evaluate our designs before incurring any cost is also possible because of computing. And then computing helps us, it depicts, it helps us find out what's happening, what's going on, what's working, where are faults, what is the state of affairs. Computing helps us in gathering data from billions of sensors and posts, and it collates it, it interprets it, it infers, and then it leads us to our to the information that what is it, what is it that's going on? Because we really want to be immersed in the reality as it is unfolding as it is taking shape. You don't want to be behind Otherwise, we will produce computing self, and there will be a dead duck behind just one screen, and not able to go beyond the keyboard and screen. So we don't want that. What I would like you to do is, computing is a response to the challenges of the present times. It's a response to the challenges of optimization. It's a response to the challenges of scanning and monitoring and calculation. So computing world is a challenge. And you have to link that with the world of business and industry. You have to see what is it that is needed, what it is that is demanded, what is that is required, what it is that is expected. And then put yourself in that bridge, that need and that power of computing, and you will have your way. You will have the research papers, you will have the intellectual property, you will have something that will make a difference in the world of business and industry. So I firmly believe 
that while Pakistan has made some progress, we have moved to about $2 billion worth of exports now. This field is employing about 40, 50,000 people now. But we can be 10 times more. We can be $20 billion. We can be, there is a need for 500,000 people to be employed who are computing persons tuned to the culture of computing. Your computer is running at one gigahertz, but you are running at 0.001 gigahertz. So how will these two speeds link up? So you have to be faster th thinker, as a thinker, as a planner, than the processor speed that is at your disposal. So this is how I believe that we can make our classrooms computing classrooms, our projects computing projects, our interaction and conversation a computing interaction and computing conversation, and our courses computing courses. So there has to be that in ingrained computing ingrained in our being, in our culture, in our learning, in our teaching, and in our research. And I can assure the young youth who are enrolled in computing programs, who are teaching computing subjects, that future is yours, career is yours, money is yours, name is yours, fame is yours. If you Think creatively, critically, innovatively. Otherwise, it's a subject for you like a history. You will study introduction to computer science. You will teach introduction to computer science, but nothing will happen except the pages of the textbooks. You will not create any difference. So make sure that you are in a field which can make a difference, which can create an impact. And now it's time to develop ourselves, to bear upon this, uh, uh, the strengths that we have, and then make an impact. I'm really delighted and much, very much pleased to see that an idea that we discussed some time back has seen the light of the day, and it was tireless effort by team headed by Dr. Nan Abid, guided by Dr. Randy Gohar, and participated by all faculty members of the Department of Computer Science, and also students who have seen that. I welcome the interest and participation of all who, have, uh, who are presenting. I hope this conference will become a platform for exchange of ideas and thoughts sharing latest research, developing new partnerships, scholarly partnerships. And I hope that this will set, this is the first mark, and it will set the tradition for future. And we will have this conference going on every year as a milestone to share the research, thinking, that has gone in the preceding year. I am grateful to all, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for honoring us and our field with such kind words. It really means a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Dr. Shahid Saroya as our chief guest today. He is the Director General of Provincial Higher Education Commission, Punjab, and has numerous accomplishments in the fields of library sciences and digital repositories. Sir, can you please honor us with a few words? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.